so right now I'm in about about to make a fire. So what do you think? Do you think that you could stay in here for a night and survive? Yes. You think so? I don't want to though. You don't want to though? <laughs> that real quick. What is up, Adventure Agents? Agent Tex here. Agent X here. Agent Trinity here. Are you homebird here? <laughs> so today is birthday survival day. It's Happy birthday, Agent Tex! Actually my birthday today. <laughs> And we are going to do a survival episode, a different kind of survival episode, using skunk cabbage. And I'm going to actually teach Agent Axe and Agent Hummingbird what to do if they get lost in the woods and are all alone. Okay? Don't ever do it. I know what to do. <laughs> he knows what to do? Okay, we'll find out, right? We'll see. All right, so, but first, Agent I've Trinity... i brought some birthday cookies! I'm so excited. These are for Agent Tex. Absolutely. And Axel and River delicious. just took their vitamins, so you can have your own mm. cookie. There you go. Oh, oh that is and fantastic. There you go. Mm. Thank you. Agent oh, you can Trinity. hold it on your napkin. If oh, you, you already like. had one? I did. I had mm. more than one, and I already feel sick. You had two? So. <laughs> oh my gosh, so good. Also, we're going to make birthday go survival soup. All right, well, let's get into the first rule of survival when it comes to Agent Axe and Agent Hummingbird getting lost in the woods. Are you savoring your cookie? The cookie is so good that you can't. You can't. She's a saver. She's like, I'm just going to nibble and nibble on this for a long time. Well, hurry up and eat your cookie because after you eat your cookie, we have dessert here. Like, I used to save mm. my cookie. <laughs> and I, like, saved it. But now I literally can't do it. I literally can't. You can't. It's impossible <laughs> for Agent Axe to save his cookie. <laughs> Before we get into the first rule, who's for dessert here? Thanks. We already had dessert. You know what this is? It's ant larva. Wait, wait. Um, I found they're this moving. earlier. They are moving. They're alive. They're ant larva. <laughs> so we're going to have some ant larva to fuel us on our survival I adventure. I thought there were ants in mm. the eggs. Mm. I thought there were ants in the eggs. Mm. I thought these were eggs. Well, that that's going to turn into an ant. Did you get any? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You ate some? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, was it good? Mm -hmm. It didn't taste like anything. <laughs> Let's see, what do you think? Tastes sour. Tastes sour? Yeah. It it just it tasted like a gummy a gummy ant to me. <laughs> it's an ant gummy worm. Alright, so picture this. You two are lost in the woods. We're hiking, and all of a sudden, you stoop to look at something and we're not there. What's the first thing that you do? Wait, stoop to look at something? Well, you stoop down on the ground to look at something cool. Like some ants and then eat their larvae. And then we're not there. What do you do? We scream. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. You make noise. Hey, we're lost. Where are you? Help! Or... What? Let me hear yours. Let me hear yours. Help! That's it. Yeah. And... Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Okay. I'm right here. I'm right here. <laughs> yes. That's exactly what you do. Make some noise. Let, let whoever you're with know, hey, I'm lost. And, but what if we don't respond? What should you do then? Climb a tree and look around. Climb a tree and look around? Maybe. Yeah, just in case, like a tiger mm -hmm. AU or something. <laughs> if you can, maybe. Maybe climb a tree and look around. Yeah. Just something very it. important when just you're a kid. So, to all you parents out there, I got this advice by reading and using my own logic. You look into it yourself to what you teach your kids to do in a survival situation whenever they're lost. Daddy, but this is just what I would tell my Daddy. kids based on what I've learned. Daddy. Well, listen, what I've listen. Read. I have it. I have it. Okay, so what? Uh, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and say it, okay? Mm -hmm. What you do is one of the hardest things to do. Stay put. Yeah, that's it. That's what you're gonna say? <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, don't walk around to yeah, get more lost. Don't walk around. Yes, exactly, to get more lost. And if you were yep. on a trail mm -hmm. and you stayed there for a while 
after that, yeah. you like walk up and down the trail. Yeah. And the reason for that is because if you are a kid <laughs> and you're lost from your party and your parents have any <laughs> sense, <laughs> like some of us parents forget mm. sometimes, so it might take a while, but we will start looking for you, okay? So someone is looking for you. It is highly likely that someone is looking for you, and if you don't stay put, then people are going to be looking at certain areas and they are not going to be able to find you, right? Mm hmm. Okay. All right. So stay put and make noise, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. But actually, even before any of that, the first thing is don't be afraid. That is a huge key. Calm your senses down. Don't be afraid. Because when I you're afraid, afraid you do things months. that aren't reasonable, that aren't rational, and you can make it worse. Don't be afraid. Like now, you, you might feel afraid, but like you, that's not what courage this. is. You do this. Courage is acting as if you're not afraid, even if you feel afraid. This is... So, if you do all those things, and you wait, and you wait, and you wait for a long time, let's just say it starts to get dark, and nobody has found you. What should you do at that point? It's it, Time has elapsed. Try to build something to stay in. Or better, yes, yes, uh-huh. What did you say? So one of the biggest problems when it comes to being out in the woods, if you are a kid and you're going to have to end up spending the night in the wild, you need to find shelter, right? And food. Yes, because actually more people die and get serious complications from the cold than extreme heat and so you need to find a place to to be to have shelter the cold, then and to stay extreme warm heat. and what's super important when it comes to staying warm is staying dry it's extremely important your body you can lose it. heat at an exponentially greater rate whenever you are wet than when you're dry so it is absolutely essential that you stay dry find a place that is sheltered that will stay dry or you can make a place and that's what we're about to show you with the skunk cabbage there you go perfect Hummingbird. Agent Hummingbird is helping with the filming. Good work. The most important thing when it comes to shelter is first <laughs> finding a place that's already naturally sheltered, right? Instead of mm -hmm. working hard to build something, find something that's naturally sheltered. This tree right here has a lot of dense foliage. You're already going to be pretty dry right here, but not dry enough. You need to be more dry if it's, if it's going to be raining. And so, it does, if it's just sprinkling, that'd be fine. Yeah. And so, something like this skunk cabbage is completely waterproof. So, are we making a fire? Yeah, we can make a fire later. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. There you go. Daddy. Do you see all those little branches? Mm -hmm. We want those because that's going to help spread out coverage for the um, for the skunk cabbage. There we go. I'll be right back. I'm going to lay it down like this, okay? And then lay it mm. down like that. Just like that. Okay, perfect. Okay, Axel, if you could lay yours right over there. There we go. Yeah, right there is good. Uh-huh. There you go. Okay. And we have, see, even with the wind blowing, actually, today we have wind blowing right now, and the wind is not even blowing these off. They actually want to stick to each other, which is really interesting. And they look like they are entirely waterproof. You ready for the test? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I have a pail of water here, and I'm going to simulate it raining. Now, right now, it's actually a warm spring day, but... If it were to rain tonight, it's going to get into the low 40s. If they were to get wet, they could actually get hypothermia very easily. Very easily. It does not have to be that cold for you to get hypothermic when you are wet. It's extremely dangerous. Let's see if it works. See if you guys stay dry. Ready? All right. 
It is raining. Raining. I'm not getting wet. It's raining like crazy, cats and dogs. I got soaked. You got soaked? Where? This is right there, that part. Oh, okay. You got a couple drops right here. Yeah. No, well, well, we have plenty more sunk cabbage. We could have double reinforced this really easily. So yes, but just a couple drops. That's actually fantastic for a shelter that we just threw together that quickly. So legitimately, I you could I use this skunk cabbage to keep you dry at night if you were in a survival situation. All right, so now I'm gonna get in here and Agent Axe is gonna dump a literal bucket of water and see if it works. Did you get what? I did get a little bit. If actual buckets of water are dumping down, then you might get a little bit wet of this. Some of it like went through the cracks. Yeah. And... There's also a few little holes in here, but if we layered this one more time, I wager not a single drop would get through. But either way, you are going to be substantially less wet than if you didn't have this. So now Agent Hummingbird is going to dump it on me and Agent X. <laughs> are you ready? I'm Whoa. scared. Oh, I'm very scared too. I'm not scared. It just ran right off. Me not. Neither. I didn't feel a single drop. Me neither. I did it yeah. right here. I, I think something I... you did, Agent X, uh, made it a little bit more likely to fall on me. <laughs> yeah, I did at the very top. Oh, okay. Like, there, and there's that big, look, look right there, there's uh, a big hole. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so I think I Agent X did it in such a way to where it was far more likely to actually drop on me. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna go build something really cool with this skunk cabbage. There are a few different kinds of blackberries here in the Pacific Northwest, and uh, this is a native variety. They're called trailing blackberries because they run along trails. They run low. They don't typically climb up high like the Himalayans and the cutleaf do. And these can actually work really well for cordage, especially the skinny stuff. But you got to watch out because you want the greener stuff, the stuff that's been more exposed to the sun in the sunnier areas, it gets more brittle and it breaks easier. Doesn't work as well for cordage. This right here is pretty green, so it'll work good enough for what I'm doing. And what I am doing is wrapping this shelter here with the blackberries because there's tons of tiny little hooked barbs on the blackberries here and I'm hoping that that will help for this skunk cabbage here to be placed onto here and it won't go anywhere. It'll just, all the little tiny hooks will hook on the cabbage without cutting holes in it and it'll stay in place, kind of like Velcro. So if you get it like this and you kind of go like that, it makes it more pliable so that when you tie it, it won't break as easily. Just kind of go like that. And also it'll break if it's gonna break. So you wanna know now, that broke. The thicker it is, the harder it is to tie because it just breaks too easily. And thinner stuff is the best. I got this Dogecoin song stuck in my head. <laughs> it makes me a shelter. Yeah. What do you think? Good. 
Working pretty good. working so far looking good so the blackberry thorns are really thin so it's not gripping all that well but uh, I think it'll work well enough I'm not gonna build this to last forever but uh, we'll see if we can build it to last for a night time <laughs> right, let's go get more cabbage So I'm taking two or three of these leaves per plant so that I don't actually uh, do any real damage to the plant, just in case. I could probably take a little bit more, but uh, there's so many of these skunk cabbage everywhere. They're huge. So I can afford to only take a couple from each one. Oh, nice. Could you cut a couple? Yeah. People are calling me for my birthday. I don't really like birthdays because I don't like all the like attention. <laughs> um, I like talking to people, but I, I guess what I don't like is having to pretend like I care about my birthday. I I do care about myself. I just don't really care about dates that much. <laughs> and so like my birthday, I'm like my birthday, it's a day and whatever. So I don't like having to pretend like I care about it. And it's hard not to pretend like you care about it when everyone else is going out of their way to show that they care about it. It's very difficult for me. <laughs> um, so I just try to get past that and be like, hey, let's talk, you know? <laughs> I think this will actually be enough. Oh, I found the Game Boy. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, yes. Oh my. Yeah. No. That is awesome. That's so awesome. Yeah, yeah. I think so, yeah. So I'm talking to my sister right now. She called to wish me a happy birthday. And so I'm going to let the kids put the skunk cabbage on the teepee. are now officially available at theadventureagents.com slash shop. We finally got them back in stock. So it's getting dark so we can light the inside. <laughs> Ta-da! Doesn't it look cool? I think it looks cool. I don't care if you think it looks cool, but I think you probably think it looks cool. And so now we're gonna start a fire inside of it. Oh, oh that was so close. Oh, you did it! Woo! All right, light the fat wood. <laughs> So this rock is so perfect. It's got a back end randomly right here that's attached to it and that can reflect heat this way. So if you were in a survival situation and you built something like this, this would keep the rain out. Look at this, I doubled up the leaves. So there are no gaps here. So the rain would not get in and there's just enough openings here. See this? It's coming up right, you can feel the heat right here. It's just enough for the smoke, as you can see, to escape through these top areas here. And you can see up underneath here, the smoke's coming out, but the rain would just hit and fall and go right down over. All right, so don't put too much wood on it because then we'll end up uh, burning and melting the, the ca skunk cabbage here, okay? Like that much right That's now? good, just leave it alone for now. So what do you think? Do you think that you could stay in here for a night and survive? Yes. You think so? 
I don't want to though. You don't want to though? <laughs> well, that's understandable. Yeah, it is a little bit complex to build something like this, but you know us, we, we do a little overkill sometimes. But the shelter that we built initially is totally something that a kid could just throw together really quick if they had their wits about them and fear wasn't overtaking them and they'd seen somebody do something like this. In fact, I know kids that were our ancestors, um, you know, thousands and thousands of years ago, I am sure that they did things like this in the past if they got lost from the party uh, for a night or if they went out for a night, you know, younger kids did things like this in the past. Uh, they had to become far more responsible than the kids we know today that we raise today uh, a lot quicker because survival was, <laughs> well, it was a lot more difficult, a lot more brutal. We got it very easy compared to those people in certain ways. In other ways, we have it harder though. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll talk about that more someday. All right, hummingbird, are you ready for the water test? Mm -hmm. So we're going to see if this thing is actually watertight. Tell me if you feel anything. Anything? Nope. Feel any water? No. Wow. Okay, so this is actually, I think, a lot more watertight than the other shelter because I overlapped it more, more leaves, and it's actually more of a severe angle, as you can tell. This is a more uh, a severe angle here. Any water? No. Nope. No? Mm -mm. Really? Nothing? <laughs> I really think that if you were a kid and you were out in a rainstorm, or if you were an adult, really, I mean, you could tuck yourself in there, you could actually legitimately uh, keep from getting hypothermia if you had something like this, especially if you made a little little fire inside there. <laughs> Honestly, this is one of the coolest things that I think we've ever built on this channel. <laughs> really, <laughs> like the log cabin, yeah, this is so cool. So what do you think? This is incredible. What do you think? It's Utsu? so perfect and beautiful. Dude, it, when when oh, I was a kid, careful, Riv. when I was a kid, I would have totally lived in it. I'd be like, all right, I'm moving in. Um, <laughs> yeah, I would even live in this if I didn't have this huge belly. <laughs> yeah, right. We just need a really Agent big Rainbow's one. Agent Rainbow's like, this is very uncomfortable in here. Yes. <laughs> I was actually initially in making this video, I was going to make a video where we made a much bigger version and we tried to get Agent Trinity to move in to that <laughs> so that she's not in a tree fort, but what about, I, I spared you. <laughs> but what about when Agent Rainbow is born soon, we see if he wants to move oh, in. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, I'm totally building a mini shelter for Agent Rainbow. <laughs> a little mini Okay, look for that thumbnail. Look for that thumbnail. <laughs> Skunk cabbage bed. <laughs> yeah, I'm super hungry for survival soup now, so let's go get some survival soup. So this is fiddlehead fern. Ostrich. ostrich yes. Fern. Ostrich. Why, why do they call it ostrich fiddlehead fern? Because it has a long neck. Like yeah. An yeah, I think it, it bends its neck out, kind of arches it out like an ostrich. Are you ready to make survival soup? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I know where we yeah. Oh, yeah. So we're going to put nettle, fiddlehead fern, and what else? Dock. Dock. Dock leaves. Yeah. Let's find some. Yeah. So you can eat them. They call them fiddlehead because it looks kind of like a fiddle at the end. And you can eat these tips right here. But also, if you go down to the bottom, there's these lower fiddleheads. Oh, and Daddy, and Mommy said you can also crisp eat the and tender. stem. All right, well, as you can see, it is not <laughs> the same day. It's the next day, but we'll say it's still my birthday. We didn't have time to do survival soup then, but uh, we're going to do it now. Let's go get some nettle. So I forgot my glove, but this cabbage, the skunk cabbage, actually works pretty well for grabbing the nettle. If you can help it, you don't want to take all the nettle from a plant, because <clears throat> then it won't go to seed. But if you're in an area where the nettle is just completely taken over, you can probably afford to just pull up a couple plants. <laughs> the nettle is more rare in this area, so I'm going to be careful not to just rip the whole plant up. 
Yeah, you can also do that. You just take your knife and like that. Boop, boop. Gently pick them up without getting stung. For those of you who don't know, nettle will sting you. Never, ever, ever eat anything that you find in the wild unless you know it won't kill you or make you seriously sick. Yeah, or this is a serious you. thing. Or especially you. what? Or sting you. Or sting you. Yeah, don't just watch our videos and be like, I saw them eat that on that show. I'm gonna eat that. Don't do it. There are lookalikes, and until you become, <laughs> I would say you, you need to be an expert in order to eat something. And when I say an expert enough on visually identifying a plant, they will kill you. There are lots of plants that will kill you. Um, and they don't care. You eat one little leaf and you're dead. So do not, do not eat anything unless you are absolutely certain that it is not going to kill you or make you seriously sick. We forgot Doc. Oh. Oh. And can you help hold this in? Hold this in. I didn't know why she didn't sweat. But. Don't fall. Don't put it in there. Ooh. It's nettle. It's nettle for that turn and dock. So right now I'm in about about to make a fire. So Agent Axe wasn't here for the water test it's yesterday. Trucker. Oh, Trucker, get in there. Trucker. There you go. Trucker, All right, trucker. here it goes. You feel anything? No. Nothing? Mm -hmm. Wow. I a from the no, it, it was coming off right there. Oh, yeah. A and, drops. and a bunch, one of my arms from way up there, but oh, it's yeah. not showed up up there. Yeah, well, no, that was from right here. I splashed it in there. We made it a little better here, so, than in the other shelter. <laughs> I know what I... That's my bowl. That is that he's got to. Here, I want that. I want oh. that bowl. Yeah. More salt. So this is a pastured chicken and the broth that it was cooked in. I just can't tell you, that is amazing. Mm. That is so good. Mmm. 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 Oh. Mm. Best birthday soup ever. Okay, so a few more things I want to tell you about survival, you guys, okay? Mm -hmm. If you're ever lost in the woods, okay, and you're legitimately lost, typically you wouldn't, like, go with someone who you don't know if they ask you to go with them, right? If they're like, hey, come with me, you know? If you're just, like, walking down the road with mom and dad, you're at a park, and somebody comes up to you like an adult and says, hey, come over here with me, you would not go with them, right? Mm -hmm. But... If you are lost in the middle of the woods and you cannot find us and another adult comes up and is like, hey, are you lost? And you're like, yeah. And they're like, hey, okay, well, let me help you find your parents. In that instance, okay, the risk of you ending up with some uh, not so good person or the risk of you staying lost and not being found, those two risks definitely letting that adult help you is definitely the better choice okay okay so i can't imagine a situation in which you're hiding in the woods you're taking shelter and you see an adult walk by and you would not want to go with that adult like um maybe this situation 
It's my birthday, and I'm going to make birthday soup. But the best ingredient of birthday soup is little children. Be quiet, so I need to find some little children to eat in my birthday soup, to put in my birthday soup, in my birthday pot. Where are the little children hiding? Hmm. I heard something. That sounds like children. This way. Yeah, don't go with that adult. <laughs> <laughs> if, if there's an adult walking through the woods saying out loud that I need children for my soup, <laughs> don't go with them, okay? But <laughs> other than situations what like that, what if you're an adult? What? What if you're an adult? <laughs> go pull I am. that other. Adult. Well, if you're an adult, and yeah, if you if you're lost and there's another adult, you definitely want to ask that adult for help. And but then, chances but, are they're gonna help you to find kid. your parents, if it was a right? Kid, the adult. The adult <laughs> would eat the kids. The okay, kids okay. Alright, I shouldn't have gone there. I shouldn't have gone there. Anyways. <laughs> um, so... Turn the flat back so we could run out and eat you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, again, survival. If you're lost in the woods and you're a kid, number one, you guys, do... Don't go with that adult. Don't be, <laughs> don't be afraid, okay? Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of that adult. Number two... Start making noise. Start calling as soon as you realize you're lost. Start calling because the the, the, the sooner, you, the longer you take, the more lost you're going to get. The more further away maybe that your parents are going to get or the adults you're with. Okay. Start making noise and respond to noise. Don't be afraid. Start making noise yes. and stay put. Okay. And also, you don't really need to worry about food. Okay. Don't be thinking about food that quickly. We all talk about like, oh, we need to eat and we need to eat bugs and stuff like that. Yes. If you're, if if it's been a couple days, you're like, I probably should start eating some bugs and stuff, right? Because uh, maybe I'm not going to be found. But you can go for a long period of time without food. You might start feeling hungry. Your stomach starts, but that's not actual hunger. Your stomach hurting because that's not actual hunger. Actual hunger is really whenever your body starts really feeling super weak. That's that's real hunger. Yeah. And you start wanting to eat yourself. Yeah, yeah. And even water. I have fasted for four days without food or water. Not a, not any water. Four days. Okay. So yeah, yeah. And I was okay. So you know you, you don't even need water that bad. But water is more important than food in the in the initial part of you being lost. So. If you're going to drink some water, just stay away from large bodies of water, okay, right? Mm -hmm. You want to drink from little streams if you have to drink, right? Mm -hmm. Little streams, not like creeks and ponds. So stay away from those. Try to find the streams and springs that are feeding the creeks, right? Yep. All right, well, that's been... What? What? And if you're in a place where it's snowy, get snow. If you have extra, like, clothes or something, put the snow in. Never mind. Yeah, you don't want to eat Just your clothes eat wet. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. I've, I've heard things about that too. I, I don't know. But definitely finding shelter away from the rain uh, is really important because wind and rain can, can decrease your body temperature but super fast. So you want to get dry and out of the rain if you're going to end up staying overnight. All right, so do you think you learned a lot today? And yesterday, no. you don't think so? I think I did. You, you, you think that you would you wouldn't survive if you were lost in the woods? I would survive anyway, even if you wouldn't. I told you. <laughs> Ajax is pretty confident. I would not go with that adult <laughs> at all. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. <laughs> You'd be like, I'm gonna eat you in my soup. <laughs> I got my survival soup. You're like, oh, but little lost kid, don't eat me in your soup. You're like, but I'm gonna eat you in my soup. <laughs> Okay, this is getting real weird. All right, Ages, remember, life's an adventure, love is a key, we love you, and we hope that your kids don't get lost in the woods, but if they do, don't hopefully go. these Daddy, tips Daddy. were helpful. Daddy, I'm not, I'm but don't do just it. listen to us, Daddy, we're not I'm experts. Not, do your own research not, when it comes Daddy, to, not, to teaching I'm your not, kids about what I'm to do as far as preparedness I'm is concerned, knock, knock, if you're gonna go out into knock, the knock. wild in a situation where you might get lost. I'm gonna tell them a knock, knock, too. Okay. Knock, knock. Who's there? Don't go with that parent. Don't go with that adult. No, listen. Um, and no, no. Don't go with that adult too. Don't go with that adult you. <laughs> I don't go with you. Agent Hummingbird out. Wait, I'm gonna do Agent, one. don't go with you. Out. Knock knock. Who's there? Cheeseburger. <laughs> cheeseburger who? I can have cheeseburger. <laughs>
<laughs> Agent Tex out. I can touch his burger. Out. Agent, my middle eater out. 